This video content is strictly for educational purposes only. All demonstrations, techniques, and information provided in this video are meant to help you understand cybersecurity better. We strongly advise against using any of this information for illegal activities or unethical practices. Please like, subscribe, and comment. All right, good afternoon. Today we're going to explore Network Mapper. We really want to go into the process of understanding what's on our network. And so we can scan different items on our network to identify what kind of operating system they have utilizing, maybe what ports or services are being utilized by that piece of equipment. We can literally get some high-end detail in a very quick, succinct way. Now, unlike Nessus or something like OpenBoss, Nmap is a command line tool that goes really, really quick. And so if we just want the bare essentials, we just want to get a sense of what's on our network, it's fantastic. Let's jump right into it. To start off with, I've got my Kali Linux right here. I did not, however, start up my Keoptrix machine. Now I'm going to do Keoptrix 2 today. I'm going to make sure my settings are correct. I'm going to go in the network. And you can see here that we're running on the host only adapter with the VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter. And the reason I bring this up as I check the Kali box is because if it's different, which in this case it is, that can pose a major problem. We're never going to talk to one another. If you go up to File, and then tools over to network manager over here on Oracle VirtualBox, you can plug in and you can see what the different networks are available. For instance, my ethernet adapter for host only, the very top one starts with 192.168.56. If I go over to NAT networks, which is the next tab over, my NAT network is operating on a 10 network. So 10.0.2.0 on a last octet of slash 24. Those two networks will never talk to one another. So I either need to change my Keoptrix 2 over to NAT network, or I need to do my Kali box over to host only. I'm going to do my Kali box over to host only just to make sure that I don't have any issues with unexpected problems. To do that, I go into the Kali clone. Once it's set down, I go into network and I literally change it from NAT network over to host only adapter. I make sure that I'm on the right one because on my system, I have two different ones. I want to make sure I'm on that first one. I press OK, and then I start it back up. This will allow the two machines to talk to one another, and I won't have any issues trying to figure out why I can't see different network items on my box. I'm also going to start up that Keoptrix 2. This will take a minute, and we'll fast forward so you don't have to deal with just watching a bare screen. Now that we've got both boxes open and both are running, as you can see, I've got Keoptrix 2 over here. I've also got my machine. We actually need to find it, and I have no idea where that other box is. The first thing I need to do is I need to understand what network I'm on. To do that, I'm just gonna do an ifconfig and that's gonna give me my IP address. I could also do IP space, oh, not that, IP ADDR, and that'll give me the same thing just in a different context. I prefer ifconfig, it's what I'm used to. You may, be, you may decide that IP ADR is better for you. Uh, it just depends on what you like, right? So we have our IP address. Now I'm gonna do the first command today that I wanna identify, which is just an in-map scan. And this scan literally just looks for the basics of what's going on your system. Now, I don't know where it's at, so I don't really have a target IP address. I just know that our Keoptrix 2 machine is somewhere on this subnet. To understand that, I need to scan this entire last octet, the zero through 255. I can do this in two different ways. I could put a dash 255 just like that, and it'll scan all the IP addresses literally from 192.168.56.0 through 255. We normally don't do it that way. I'll show you the better way to do it, but I can also use this command if maybe I only want to scan the first 10 IP addresses. And so if I wanted to go 192.168.56.0 dash 10, it would only scan one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it would go through that process. Now, going this route, 192.56.0 through 255, I quickly find the, the IP address I'm looking for for our Keoptrix 2 machine is 104. If I had more boxes on my network, it would provide those as well. The other command I want to show you is instead of doing dash 255, we're going to just do a slash 24. Now, this is a CIDR control for the 24, and if you consider that the first octet is eight, so if I did 192.0.0.0 with a slash eight, it would search these IP address ranges. 
If I did a dash 16 or slash 16, it would search the last two. And finally, if I did 24, it only searches the last one. I'm gonna go ahead and run that scan while it's going through and just continue to talk. Uh, the scanning philosophy that you really wanna have when you're coming down to this is I only wanna scan the minimum that I need to scan. And so if I know that the machine is on the last octet, there's really no reason for me to scan a slash 16. After all, it takes time to run through the scan for it to give us the basic principles. But this scan with no enumerators on there whatsoever, or no, I should say, uh, uh, switches on there is just a basic nmap scan. And it tells me some useful information. It tells me the IP address. It tells me the host is up. It also gives me latency. It also went through and showed that there's 1,000 closed TCP ports. So it doesn't even really scan all the ports, but it scans a majority of them, mostly the well-known ones that it's familiar with. We can see here that it's shown us that there are some ports open. It also tells us the state and the services associated with it. For instance, port 22 is open, operating on TCP, and it's running the SSH service. And we can run down the pocket list of seeing that every day. I can, however, just run a simple scan. And if I wanted to, I could type in 192.168.56.104, and I would just literally scan that one IP address. I wouldn't need to scan a range because I have the IP address already identified in target. I don't really feel like we need to do that right now. When it comes to scanning, the next one I wanna show you is what we call an aggressive scan. Now, an aggressive scan performs a scan with additional options such as operation system detection, uh, it also can do some scripting as well as some trace route if I had devices between my box and another device. Now, I can tell you I don't have any of those things in there. So I am going to do an aggressive uh, nmap scan. And to do that, I just literally do a TAC and then a capital A with a target. Now, you want to be careful when you're running nmap scan to only run one target at a time unless it's just a basic sweep scan like we did here. The reason is, is because it can take quite a bit of time if you're not careful. Now this dash A or this TAC A, it's doing the aggressive scan. It's gonna go through and really pump the systems. If you really wanted to get caught on a network, uh, this is the best way to do it. Doing an aggressive scan will light up a seam system or anything else like a Christmas tree and literally point out that you're doing this scan. You are not trying to be sneaky when you run this type of scan, but it gives us some additional information. It tells us, for instance, what our host key is for RSA1, what it is for DSA, and what it is for RSA. It also tells us what service we're running. For instance, we're using SSH version 1 on this machine. It's telling us that port 80 is TCP open and that the server it's utilizing is Apache HTTPD version 2.0.52, and best case scenario, it's running a CentOS operating system. We can scroll down and see all these great things associated with that TAC A because it's going through and running a pretty aggressive scan to figure out everything that's associated with it. Aggressive scans are great if you are in a lab environment or if you're in a capture the flag environment where you're really just not concerned with how much traffic you put on the network. It is noisy. It's going to light up Wireshark. It's going to light up the network. It is definitely not something I would do if you're on a normal enterprise environment unless you really have to know the information very easily, very quickly, and you need it in full detail. We can, however, do something else. In Wireshark, we can do something on the opposite side, and we call this a stealth scan, or more appropriately, it's a sin scan. To run this command, we just do nmap, and then we can do lowercase s, uppercase s, and this provides us with stealth scan, i.e. ss, where then we're gonna point in our target, because remember, we need a target no matter what we're doing, in this case, we're gonna run that 104. Now, this one requires root privileges, so we're just gonna type in sudo in there first. You'll notice this with a lot of ngat commands, and to be honest, I'm really surprised that I don't just type in sudo uh, right up the get-go, however, because how much it requires it. And let me type in the password there, and it's gonna go through and do a basic stealth scan. The nice thing about a stealth scan is, while it doesn't make as much noise on the network, it's not going to light up that Christmas tree effect on Wireshark or on your SIEM systems. It's not going to give us all the greatest and latest information either. You can see here that honestly, the regular in-map scan gave me the same information, but it did a little bit slower. And you probably didn't realize that it did a little bit slower, but it actually did. 
uh, and then computer sense, it's still going to provide a log. We can't stop that, but it is going through and it's not lighting up or it's not making a lot of noise on that network. So if you have a busy enterprise system, this is probably the better way to go. Now, let's say for instance, that I didn't really care about having all the information. I just wanted specific port information. I could do a sudo and then nmap and then a switch P lowercase. That switch P is going to say, I want to scan for a specific port. So if I wanted to know if port 80 was open on any of my machines, I could literally port in port 80 and then type in again, the IP address or the range of IP addresses that I wanted to scan. This would be nice to show me, hey, what items are available or what IP addresses have this port open, especially if we're trying to determine on our network, we don't want port 80 open anymore. We wanna get rid of HTTP, we just want HTTPS running. So let's run a quick scan over a range of servers to make sure that none of them are currently running HTTP. And this would provide that capability to us. The next one I wanna do is to identify the operating system. To identify the operating system of our target, I can do a sudo nmap attack o, and then I can identify the IP address and scan. This is 192.168.56.104, and this is going to try and do a best guess on finding out what that operating system is. Now, I say best guess because I've been in Capture the Flag events in the past where we ran this command and it came up with a VoIP phone or it came up with another service. It's not always accurate. I give it about a 90%, 98% accuracy rating. It does normally work the way it's supposed to. However, it really sucks when it doesn't, especially if you're in a CTF event. I was working with a partner and we were both doing our own thing. He actually had to come in and then do his in-map because he had done upgraded to the newest version and his map in-map program was able to identify the right uh, operating system where mine was providing a VoIP phone. It was very much frustrating especially when you're trying to hack into a box for a capture the flag event, and then you just can't do it. Uh, so now, because of that learning uh, process, you'll notice that I always run with two Kali boxes on my machine. Usually I update one with the newest, latest, and greatest of all that's going on before the CTF event, and then the other one I keep as an older version, just in case I wanna run two machines simultaneously, because sometimes that program has an issue. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best thing to do, but I am saying that if you're entering a CTF, sometimes it's better to have two operating systems if your core operating system can handle it in a virtual environment. But you can see here that it did provide me the operating system. I can see that it's running a Linux kernel version 2.6 and the Linux details are 2.6 through 2.30, meaning that somewhere in there is where it's lying. I know that this is a best guess. It's not going to be 100% accurate as we explained but it gives me a lot of good information if I'm trying to determine what kind of system I'm trying to go after or what type of system is associated with it. I can also identify if there's a specific uh, network attached to it. Now, be careful with this. I have this one inputted in my, into my folders, so it identifies this IP address as being the pig.net because I have it set that way inside my internal box. But if I didn't, this would not show up, and so be careful of that, okay? All right, the next command I wanna show you is services. And we're gonna do an nmap, switch lowercase s, uppercase v against the same target, if I can type correctly. And this is gonna provide me with the services that are showing on that target machine. Services like SSH. Now, it's gonna do better details and it's not as aggressive as an aggressive scan, but it still provides a lot of the same input. In some ways, it actually provides more input. So if I wanted to determine what SSH it's running and I ran this scan, again, it's gonna give me a best guess, but I can see we're running SSH version 3.9. I can also go to port 80 and see that it's running not just HTTP, but it's running Apache HTTPD on a 2.052 system. Now we identified as a sent OS, meaning it's a Linux OS as a best guess. And I wanna point that out, that's a best guess. Don't take it for granted, especially if you're going into a competition or if you're going into a certification exam. Then we have 443. It's confirming what it's already decided on port 80. And we can also see a couple other ones here with MySQL and COPS. Now, if I wanted more information on any of these, I could research that using a variety of different tools. 
We're not gonna drive into that today. We're gonna move on. This final scan really does provide us a lot of great information. And I highly recommend it if you're going into a position where you're trying to do a capture the flag event or hack the box event. It just gives us a ton of information. Uh, it's very noisy, it's very aggressive, but it has a very in-depth analysis associated with it. And now this command is going to be sudo. And then we're gonna do that in map and we're gonna do a switch p switch. Now this tac p tac or switch p switch command scans all 65,535 ports on the machine. Before we were scanning the most popular, the thousand or so that most people utilize. But this one, this one scans them all. And then the next command we wanna do is a tac a or switch a. This is the aggressive scan. So not only are we scanning all the ports, but we're doing it very aggressively to look for as much information associated with the target. And finally, the IP address of the target we wanna scan. Again, if you're doing a CTF event, this is the route I would go. It's gonna save us a lot of time, a lot of energy. There's no reason to do a lot of these scans because this one literally gives us everything that we need to know. Don't do this command in a live network. It will cause all kinds of alarms on the system. Your IDS will most likely pick it up and shut it down. Uh, and it's very easily detectable. And your IT people are probably going to be asking what the heck you're doing. So if you're on a college campus and you're playing around with something like this, uh, Nmap, while it's not technically illegal to do Nmap on a live network, it's very much unethical to do so uh, because you could cause problems on the system or on the network and make cybersecurity jump through hoops to find out what's going on. They could also do things like block your IP address or your MAC address associated with your computer and do all kinds of other things where you may lose access. That's why a lot of times when I'm showing off these different tools or command features, you'll notice that I'm doing it inside a virtual or sandboxed environment. That makes it safe. I'm not going to accidentally send a command outside of my network because again, it's sandbox. This is the best place to do these types of tools when you're first learning cybersecurity and even thereafter. But you can see as we scroll down that that aggressive scan is getting us a lot of the information that we saw before. But you'll also know this, that it's going through the ports very individualized and it's searching literally for all of them. It's going through every one of the ports associated with this system. It's giving us the MAC address associated with our NIC card. It's giving us the general purpose information of the device. It's getting us the operating system. It's even providing us certain difference like, hey, is there a trace route associated with it? It's literally going through and giving us as much information that Imap is capable of giving us to us through this command feature that I would consider to be opportune before I start diving in to other exercises or into vulnerability testing in a hack the box com competition. Well, that's Imap. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. If so, please go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you next time. Thank you again. My name is Dr. K. We'll see you again.